Hey guys, this is Stacy, um, owner and director of Teen Turnaround, and I'm, I'm gonna sit here and have a conversation with a gentleman by the name of Mr. Milan, also known as Milan Firebug. Um, after the Nipsey Hustle situation out in LA, um, just reading through all the different um, things that were on television, um, I came across um, a picture of this gentleman and Nipsey, and um, just a lot of negative comments about how this guy probably had something to do with what happened with Nipsey. So me being the nosy person that I am, I kept reading. And I read the, the Instagram posts and I read the different um, articles about him, only to find out that right before this happened, he had actually met with Nipsey. Not on some negative nonsense, but on some um, fairly super positive peacemaking type of stuff. And so I'm going to let him kind of introduce himself and tell you a little bit more about that so we'll get a feel for who he is before we keep talking. Those that don't know, my name is Mylan. Uh, I'm better known as Firebug in the streets. I'm from Inglewood. Uh, you know, across the street rival from Nipsey. And it's been a war that's been going on forever, since the beginning of time with us and them. But uh, people don't understand, it, was, it wasn't a meeting. It was basically an accidental run-in with each other that just turned into a blessing when I look back on it in hindsight. Understand something like, man, that dude reached a level in the game that he transcended the hate and the hunt and the, the on site animosity that we grew up on for years with them, you know. And me sitting down for 12 years in prison is still something to me, you know what I'm saying? That brought me up and, and, and awakened me as a grown man to see the bigger picture now, you know? So when I look back in hindsight, I know that that meeting was kind of like a blessing because I was only out to go get breakfast that morning and ended up going into that restaurant and uh, walked in on him with his, with his back turned and street turns slipping. But doing any type of destructive, any type of violent, anything like that, it's never on my mind, you feel me? When I walked in on him from behind because of, uh, off top, I'm looking at a man that came from the same blocks where I came from, just different colors, different sides, but transgressed to a level in the game that, you know, I'm not even talking about the millionaire status, I'm talking about the humanitarian on the blocks where we from and in our communities, you know, building businesses and, and giving back to the community. So when I walked up on you from behind, it was like, wow, it's now. <laughs> tapped him on the shoulder, you know, so he could face me, so I could walk past him, you feel me, which was an honorable thing to do in my eyes, and uh, when I tapped him, he turned around, and you could see in his eyes, it was like, you uh, feel me, which was expected, because I'm going to be the same way, and, uh, but when he looked, it wasn't a fear, it was like, oh, uh, <laughs> You. <laughs> you. <laughs> like, like, oh, all right, you got me, you feel me? But it was one of these, looked around like, yeah. all right. But mm -hmm. Mine's back at him was like, I uh, got okay. you. <laughs> what up, Nip? You feel me? Yeah. One of them things, like, what up, Nip? No pressure. His whole face was like, just a, a humbleness, but strength, though. He just smile. He was talking to somebody and he stopped, like, excuse me. Hey, hey, bro, you feel me? <laughs> I just I turned around, I was at it. He was like, man, hey. And they firewood. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, are you from sitting on the park? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he just he, he laughed. He already knew the way he laughed. And he said, uh, yeah, man, I be seeing you on IG. He said, yeah, real nigga shit. And he said, real nigga shit. I said, all the time. He said, nah, for real, real nigga shit. Like, you be on some real nigga shit. He said, man, me and my niggas be paying attention. Just because we don't be pressing the like buttons. You know what it is. You feel me? I'm tired, you feel me? Like, I, you know, respect yeah. So I told him, I said, man, I just watched your whole career from prison. And uh, I respect, you know what I'm saying, what you've become and what you've done for our people, period. And he smiled and he was like, man, you about to sit down and eat? I told him, yeah. So he said, all right, I'm gonna conversate right here and uh, can I join you? And I said, man, yeah, I'm gonna be back here. And I walked and sat down. I didn't, I didn't think too much of it. But then, like, after five minutes, I'm like, hold on, is he really about to come back here and come holler at me? And uh, I 
look, he had his hand on the door like he was getting ready to leave. And uh, he turned around, he just, I seen him staring in, in my direction, so I stood up. He came walking back through the restaurant, he came and uh, I stood up to greet him, he shook my hand. Into my hand, he shook my hand, and uh, he looked down at my arm when he was shaking my hand, but it was like his grip just held it, like he wouldn't let go. He was looking at my tattoo. And so uh, when he seen that, because I had a t-shirt on, but when he seen that, he like smiled and was like, uh, he said, is that Malcolm? I said, yeah. And he just smiled and he said, bro, I've been waiting on you. But at the time, it's like, you know, when you just, in the moment, it was like you saying you waiting on me. It didn't really hold no, no factor to me. It was just like all the time, bro. You feel me? It was that common kind of respect, bro, all the time. He said it again, like, bro, I've been waiting on you. Hmm. And he said, you probably don't remember me. And I told him, like, I don't remember you. Like, come on, man, you nip. Like, you feel me? <laughs> like, just be honest, though. You feel yeah. me? Like, I don't remember you. Even if I didn't know you, I know you. You know what I'm saying? He said, nah. He said, man, before I had a long deal on that little thing, he said, man, when you fell, when you first fell on your bed, I was in the home tank. Mmm. Wow. Now, when he said that, but he holding my hand the whole time, I was in the home tank. And I'm like, all right, you feel me? But I remember him being in the county at the same time as me. But at the moment, I was going through so much that I went through. You feel me? I see a million people. He said, well, my homies are packed out with your homies. He said, uh, before we got a tank, the homies packed out my homie. We came in, you know, I still had a sound number. And you told your homies, like, nah, we're not about to jump them. Like, your homie jumped my homie. We caught him, so we jumped him back. But the rest of y'all, I never forgot that, bro. He was like, that was militant. And he smiling the whole time. And I, that's, from that, we sat down. We sat down, he just, it's like, we got that out the way. Once we got that out the way, like I said, he never let my hand go. It was like, he just took me on a whole journey. Because from that, next thing out of his mouth was, bro, I'm about demonstrations. That's the first thing he said. Like basically like if you think I'm on some soft shit or you feel me? Like I'm really sitting down as a man. And a man gonna understand that, you feel me? He said, bro, I'm about demonstrations. He said, I'm with everything. But I don't have the energy for nothing. And I know what he was doing. That summed it up how I've been feeling. I'm with everything. But I don't have the energy for nothing no more. That's dumb right. shit. The negative shit, the fake shit, the buster shit, the snitch shit. I don't have the energy for that no more. This man came from nothing. You feel me? And I'm not the one to sit here after this man that lost his life and say, oh, we was best friends. Oh, I was just with him. Not the real no, I was just with him because he let the real know. He said, let's take that picture. And I was honored to take that picture. But the things that he spoke, when we sat down, was like, the word peace treaty never came up. When you know, when you, when you cross paths with another real individual, the word peace treaty will never have to come up because we already know the level that we on in the game and that's when we awaken. And when you go deeper than that, Prophet knows when he sees another prophet. You know? He seen Malcolm on my arm. His first chain was Malcolm. I only think about that in hindsight. It didn't hit me till later on, as I look back on everything I was saying. Hi, bro. You from high, bro. They don't know how I've been living. I 
I've been waiting on somebody to tell it on your side. Who else gonna tell the story better about the foe than you? Anybody Everybody better? know how you've been living, cause you know, it's out there. I know how to have to say it. I never had to say it. That's the problem. These dudes talk, they say, they keep position. These dudes come off the porch. Generals. But you ain't suffering. You ain't sacrificed. You ain't did nothing. You ain't even been through nothing to even know if you gonna be here when the smoke clear. <laughs> no, I didn't know him like that. I didn't. But we know. And things that he told me let me know that when he started his career and the bullets ain't got no name and faces, he knew me. He said, bro, I'm gonna be on the block. Watch that part. <laughs> <laughs> Five months, two, three times. <laughs> wow. You're about to make problems. We're not, we not taking this as offensive. We're laughing because, you feel me? Because I'm going to tell you what I it's read the, in the little book. It's the cigar thing. We laughing like that. Yeah. But we, at the same time, he like, business. Businesses. He said, bro. Oh, I feel good walking up Slauson, seeing businesses that I open, seeing people that I employ and gave me jobs. He said, bro, I'm trying to do that all the way to the beach. But between me and the beach, it's equal. Mm -hmm. Peace Treaty, we talking about pyramids. <laughs> You feel me? Yes. You don't have you don't have to put no title or nothing like that. Meet aggression with aggression. I'm gonna meet humbleness with humbleness. Period. If you think like that, bro, hey, you feel me? Let's both get home to our kids tonight. Cause if you've been in here living how I've been living, yeah. It just hurt me like that because why I had to happen to that man right. when I got to see him. Why that man had to tell me he been waiting on me. Make you feel pressure? I don't never feel pressure. You feel me? If it ain't no controversy, if it ain't no pressure, I don't even sleep with him. So, from this, meeting with Nip, this chance meeting with Nip, that turned into what I'm going to call a blessing. My cousin just recently told me, because you and I discussed that, um, anything that we've walked and gone through up until this point, no matter how bad, how long, no judgment, but, and I still here, and even allow you to do all that, change your mindset and not have a plan. So, kind of in y'all's conversation, kind of like saying, he passed a, a, a mini blueprint on to you because he had the blueprint. So for you, from this point on, if it's, if, if, if it's, it's a feeling, a goal, a gut, if it's something that's calling you, like what from that meeting would you take that's going to make all of that worthwhile? It's going to make all of that worthwhile. It's going to make you rest even better than you're resting right now. Right? That everything that happened in 13 years you did wasn't in vain. It was never in vain. It was never in vain. It was a lesson. Even when I cried, even when I cried, you feel me? Ain't nobody gonna sit here in this chair and tell you I didn't cry. I didn't, I didn't cry because I was scared. I cried because it was the pressure and, and the things that I was going through. I seen people on the side of me drop, just going PC, just giving up. Just, and you still here? And I'm still here. It's a reason. You just checked out and just. It just tarnished your whole career because you got a dear job from your girl because she's because she's she leaving. Your whole legacy gone down the drain because you got a dear job and you can't deal with it. But my mama just died. My grandfather died while I was talking to him on the phone and got a stroke. You still got a My grandmother died over here. My homies getting killed everywhere. Plus I'm at war with homies on the yard. But I ain't going to 
going out like that. I'm going out like a sucker, though. Period. Period. I'm still surviving all prayers that my mama prayed in 1988, 84. My mama been told me I was different. Nick told you because he knew he was different. And your dad just told me the exact same thing. See, people don't understand why I finally called me the mayor. And period, I was the first ever Period, the mayor. You didn't hear the president, the, the, the ambassador, the governor, the, you feel me? The, 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 the killer, all of that. The Nobody mayor. ever said the mayor. The mayor. You feel me? Why? Because I never wanted the, 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 the box office and the president of the big White House. I'm with the people. The mayor, got, he got power. Mm -hmm. the mayor, right up the street. He right there with the people. You trying to touch him? You feel me? Mayor come down off them steps, he riding the streets. That's why I was the mayor. I don't know why he did everybody else. I guess they wanna ride in the car with the flowers <laughs> and the, on the back, the Theodore Roosevelt ways and all, and we not doing that. In order to be a leader, you gotta be a servant to the people first. And that's just gonna make you look. You gotta sit in the audience and watch these jackasses make a fool of themselves on stage and hear what the people whispering and saying, Man, I somebody to get this fool off the <laughs> Are we really following this dude? Shame. That's how you know what the people need. Because when enough is enough, you only volunteer for the job after you've been chosen. And I think that was another part of our conversation, you and I, and a few times that we've had, like you're saying, like, you know, the church can't reach you. People over here in these high places can't reach you with all these 999 degrees. If you are not in in a situation, been in a situation, been through something, experienced something, you can't really genuinely ever reach the next person. So in order for change of any kind, so um, right now our youth is the biggest thing because they got to grow up at some point, we pray. Um, it, it's got to be an interactive thing. It's got to be super interactive, like you said, on, on, on the streets, on the in, 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 right there where they are, in the parks. You know, in, in, in the clubs, in, in the neighborhoods, in the areas in which where they are and where they relate. Not in these places that the TV wants you to believe in terms of power. Because that ain't where the issues are. Somebody that's not out here can't tell you how to survive. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Somebody that's made know. to survive in the North Pole temperature <laughs> can't tell you how to survive in, in the Serengeti. I do. You feel me? I do. All right. So, you can't, that first you gotta realize that. Once you realize that, then you understand, you feel me? The church can't reach these youngsters out here in the streets. They don't even understand what's going on in the church, first of all. They don't, they don't even know, they don't have a clue. Yeah, they might be surviving off those prayers, but you're not gonna reach them out here in the streets. All of these so-called rappers promoting the gang shit and all that, they're not gonna reach these things. You feel what I'm saying? In order to reach them, you gotta be loved them. You gotta sit with them. You gotta eat with them. You gotta suffer with them. Make them feel like they can relate to you. There's no judgment. How could you tell me about the game when you can't even feel my pain? How you gonna tell somebody that's full of hate and misguided already, and then off a million gang drugs, you gonna sit down in one minute and teach them about the Holy Bible? You can't. You can't. Or you gonna tell them that, oh, you want to spend the rest of your life in jail? Oh, if you don't change your life, you're going to spend the rest of your life in jail. But you talking to a little kid that's 13, 14 years old, and they got 32 no bullets clue. in his clip. <laughs> and been doing shit. they doing a whole bunch of stuff about life. But you want the textbook, degree to person with, with, with all these letters behind their name to come and try and teach that kid something, which leads me to um, kind of talking a little bit about something else, the reason that I originally um, even went in this man's Instagram. Um, I, I asked him in his Instagram if he would be a part of my program called Teen Turnaround. I needed a uh, life lesson. And uh, when I say a life lesson, um, I don't want a life lesson from someone who has not experienced something or other. And um, after reading about you, 
after uh, reading your posts, and I read probably every one of your posts, just trying to get to know before I even addressed you to see if there was even th anything you were interested in. Um, what I saw was when I have my young girls or I have my young guys come in and they, they read a lesson in my book of life lessons or they see a part of a video clip, I want them to be able to relate to something either they've seen, they've experienced, they've heard, or other. Um, and being that you are on a path to say, okay, I've done it, I ain't got nothing else to prove. I did this time and I came home now, where do I need to work at? You know, my, my thing is, what would you tell a young boy, young girl, 13 to 17 years old, what would you tell your younger self? If you could look back and stand your younger self on the other side of that camera, what life lesson would you give to the younger you? What would you tell fire at that age? I'm sure you probably got thousands of them. I'm gonna start with them because that's right. That's right. That's right. We've been buying lots to believe. We've been DP'd and beat up to believe. Ain't nobody bigger than the hood. Ain't nobody bigger than the hood. You ain't bigger than this. Sure enough. And they hate you, and people hate you to a, to, to a level that you you don't even understand why they hate you. That means you became bigger than the hood. And that's wow. why they hate you. And they kill you for it. Jealousy. But when a person still doesn't understand that, when you got a, a man like me, it came from that. Did what he had to do while he was in that. Still was doing what he had to do to transition onto this. On another, another level. Even yeah. if the act that just took place, you feel me, happens, what they don't understand is you just made me even greater. Because even in death, I would still be greater than you. Still be greater than you. Still and that's what they don't them. understand. Even in death, we will still be greater than you. Period. Everybody wants to be that somebody. But nobody wants to feel them shots. Yeah. Nobody wants to feel that life sins. So that's what separates people that think they this the ones that, like Nip, that take the stand. That's, That's only now that I look back in hindsight when I'm seeing videos of the police in the streets <laughs> and he put his hands up, but yeah, he jumps out the car out there with the people like. Hey. He was already out. They socking out 13 year olds right now, whole face busted for resisting. So he easily could have got that. I see nobody else jumping out there doing that. in the neighborhood that you guys don't even own. Is that right? Well, no, shit. Okay. <laughs> well, Nip should have been the only game over there because he owns it over there. He, right. can, he can really come out and be like, hey, get off my property. And it's his property. <laughs> and then his property. Get off my property. Come on. And he had that right. Come on. He literally had that right. Come on, why would you not sit down with this man and share ideas with him? I want to be great too. Show <laughs> me the map and how you got there. And the fact that you said you've been waiting on me because I know I'm brilliant. But the fact that you yeah, here, it, I'm here in these terms, you came from this and down here in these terms. So who would have brought that? <laughs> because I want to know how'd you, you get there. You feel me? Right. Not only do I want to know, I'm not picking up seeds. I'm studying. I'm going to put in the work to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the most important part. Can't uh, go through something, experience, and then just kind of sit dormant on it. You know, and that's not a wise person. I know you got something I need. I know if you possess some knowledge, 
and help me get to the next level. But I'm going to sit back because I'm on some smart type stuff. No. Never know. A wise man is going to sit back like you just said and say, say man, show me. Show me how you got that. It's enough for everybody. It's enough recognition for everybody. I got to go back and take it to my hood so we can clean this up and teach them it's a better way. With that being said, you know. I tell, I tell you, like, man, I don't want these people lie to me. When I say people, I mean anybody that's trying to oppress your spirit. Anybody. anybody that's oppressing anything that you believe in that's righteous. You feel what I'm saying? Stand for it. Because, like I said, me personally, just to take myself out the equation, I'm gonna speak for myself. I'm for peace, but I'm not for peace treaties. Gotcha. Because throughout history, that has never worked. Cause my wars. And I'm not gonna lie to myself or the people. That's why when I pay my respects, I went by myself. I felt a certain way respectful and, and, and honorable for something that we, you feel me? And it wasn't a publicity thing. It wasn't it a was, publicity It had nothing thing. to do with publicity. No one would have ever known. I didn't, no I didn't come known. with no red on. I didn't come with no blue on. People don't even understand when I posted the picture, he was still living. Yeah, he was. Because that was the first picture. He was still he was, living. Yeah. So everybody reposted it thousand times. People don't understand. Tell me nothing about this man. I didn't have to know a man my whole life. I'm spiritual. I'm a spiritual dude. A lot of people have been externally strong. And when they get hit upside the head, they crumble because they're fragile in here. I'm strong here. That's more Feel important. Me? He was strong here. That's why when the shots was let off, Everybody else did this way. He did this way. Mm. Not even afraid. He did this way. Not even afraid. You're absolutely right. Mm. Absolutely right. He did this way. And they broadcasted that video over and over and over for the young soldiers out here to see. That's your example. This is what we do to you, leaders. That is your example. I'm going to pick up the torch. I'm going to pick up the torch. All I say the crying and all that from Miss Gladys. Hey, yeah, pretty much. All you so-called militants. What's going on? Oh, yeah. I'm not preaching no violence. I'm not gonna be no messiah, eh? Right? I'm just speaking on what peace. it is. I'm just speaking on what it is. And what happened? What? Why? Peace you here, that's a, Why do I wanna keep going at it? Going at it over here, going at it over there? Why would they even wanna come over here to us? The blood, the blood ain't did that. Why would we wanna go over there to them? They didn't do that. You're reading the Bible. It says, Matthew 10, 30, your enemy is in your own household. The only ones that can really hurt you. So, anybody that's still looking at their enemies that they was brainwashed to believe was their enemy. Yeah, you in a car smoking weed with a dude in your back seat. Wait. At the homie on the yard doing life, for that you ain't dealt with. Mm -hmm. He could be the next one to do that to you. When y'all go, shh, disheveling the dirt, the dirt. upturning stones. That could be you next. So why would you still be thinking foolishly on, I don't like them, I don't like them. They did that, they, they killed us over here, we killed them over there because we were supposed to. We was brainwashed, we was trained up to, to, to do that. So how can I be mad? You, you scored? I was scoring too. You feel me? But the one that grew up with me, sitting on my couch, eating my last bowl of cereal, probably had a crush on my sister, sleepovers all type of, 
do me like that? Nah, that ain't supposed to happen, Sean. It's supposed to never happen. But it's gonna always happen, you know why? Your enemy can't really hurt you, you know what? They're not in your personal business every day. Yeah. They don't know your every move. From a distance? Yeah. They know your move from a distance. But there's people that are sitting right here with you. They know what time you get up. They know where you drop your daughter off at the school. They know what time you're gonna make it back to the neighborhood. They know what time you gotta go pick mom up, drop her off some chicken, whatever. They know. Yeah. They're the closest to you. They know your feelings. Yeah. They know your heart, they know what makes you tick and what don't. Yeah. And people over there that's your real enemy, they don't got that kind of inside into them. Yeah. Unless somebody sitting right here at your table, they gave it to them. But you know, the coolest thing about that is, people like me and them, <laughs> we know that. You know that. You already know he was prepared. We know that. That's why I got Malcolm. That's why he had to change Malcolm. Because even in knowing that, we still push a cold line. If you think about Denzel Washington. Uh, Tell him he sat down as enemies. He walked out as brothers. And from the bottom of my heart, man, I ride with to the end with him. Just off that meeting. Because I know the spirit knows, or at least another spirit that's kin to it. Right. And he knew just in that meeting that it don't matter what everybody else around us was on. Right. Right. We both sides could clash for eternity. But he knew that. I mean, he would always kept it loyal. Because that's the type of person I am. Even your thing. That's not me. You feel me? Yeah. That's not me. I'm not finna do that. Because anybody that know where we from, I'm from LA, I'm from Inglewood, we from California. That's the motherland of this gangster city. And people don't play about the dead homies. That's what it is. 
Yeah, so I that, that, that's me. already, I don't have to say nothing to call that. All I gotta say is, I'm from California. Niggas don't play about their dead homies. And then you don't disrespect the dead homies. People don't really play like that out there. I don't have to say anything. There's nothing I can do for you, brother. Keep it's not even on me, brother. You're not even on me. Fuck. My brother said it all the time. <laughs> oh man, it's real. It's like, I wish it could have been longer. I wish I could have. One more time. I don't get caught up on that because I done seen it. I done seen it. That's, 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 that's every day where we at. That's every day where we at. Girls and roses, that's every day where we at. So, Lifestyle. to get, you feel me? That's the, when life has no value, death has its price. We already understood this. He knew that. Man, that's the peace now, man. I said it. You feel me? And, and, and I can say that from the bottom of my heart, because anybody that know where I'm from, I'm from Inglewood, but your life can consider a joke. And that's how we push out there. Man, to no pity, Inglewood City. Well, guys, you heard it. Straight directed.